Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we are going to see an example of how we can merge two transports, meaning how we can merge the objects of one transport into another transport. Now this is fairly straightforward when the objects contained in both the transports are unique. That means, for example, uh, I have the secondary transport here and the primary transport here. Now, let's say in the primary transport, I have a package and a program and in the secondary transport, I have, let's say, some DDIC element. And if I'm merging something from secondary into primary, nothing is impacted. Nothing of this because they're all unique. So nothing uh, out of this package or out of this program. Obviously, if the package contains the DDIC, then that may be impacted, but since in here uh, it doesn't, so it does not get impacted. So merging is pretty straightforward. I mean, you just right click and then you do a merge request and then you write uh, which transport is getting merged into which transport. So the second transport is uh, then deleted, the transport that we are going to merge in. So the place of caution in here is if the objects in both the transports are the same. So we are going to see an example of if the transport, if both the transport contain objects that is common, then how do we go about merging it? Now, before even going ahead, we might think that why will we have the same object in multiple transports? So there can be multiple reasons. Now, for example, in our project, the reason was when we were moving some of the objects from dev into QAS and uh, every time we move an object into QAS, the base system had to perform some activity uh, related to CDS views, let's say, you know. Uh, yeah, so they had to perform some activity in QAS. And so once we moved those changes and every time now from dev, if we had to send even a single line of code into QAS, the authorities that the basis team had put in used to get overwritten and then they would have to reapply those authority checks or those authorizations. So in order to prevent that from happening, what we decided to do was just unlock the objects from our primary transport so that now they are open to editing and to be saved into any other transport. Make our changes into that newly created transport and when all the final changes have been done, merge them into the primary transport and so the basis team would not have to you know, do those same activities over and over again. Anyway, so the reason for merging can be different. It can vary for you, but yeah, it can happen. So let's just take an example over here. Uh, primary transport. Let me create another a program. Let's say I'm creating Y test VR3 test program. Executable save in my local package. So I'm saving all of this into a primary transport and I'm not going to write much. I'm just going to write, let's say, uh, this is original or primary transport. And just save it. So now that I have saved it, I refresh this. And if you go in here, we can see that the program has been created into the uh, primary transport. So we can also see it from here. Look overview and 5598, which is our primary transport. Now, uh, so at this point I've moved it into QAS and now I want to make some changes into this, but not inside this transport because this contains other objects that base system has to put their authorizations on. So I'm just going to, I just need to do this. So I will select this transport, unlock it first. Once we unlock it, that is when we can select, save it into another new transport. So did I just unlock it? Yes, I did. So I unlocked it and then I refresh it. So now if you go in and make any changes into this, I'll just go back and come back in again. So now I make any changes into this. I'm going to comment this out and then let's say I write something here that let's say this is a secondary TR. So these are the changes that I made. So testing team found out something that is not right and so we had to make a change. Now because we had unlocked it, we can see here that we are now prompted to select a new transport. So we'll just go in and select the new transport. So in, at this point, I'm going to select the secondary transport. Since it does not have anything, we I can select this one. So secondary transport changes are done and activated. Cool. So I'll close this now and I refresh this one. So you can see here that the secondary transport here also has those changes or that program. And then now your primary transport also has those changes in the VR3. 
So if you go in and see here, this uh, is secondary TR, the changes that we made, and so which was in the secondary TR, fair enough. But if you go in and see the primary transport also, if I go into here, it will also show the changes of the, the recent changes of the secondary TR. So that means that the program always shows the latest changes, which we all know, but all those transports are going to contain the latest changes, so which is good. And now the point is of merging. So uh, after we have done all, those, all our changes, now we need to merge the contents of secondary transport into primary. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to copy this primary transport, sorry. Copy 5598 and I'm going to right click on secondary TR and go into merge requests. So it says the full content of the first request is to be moved to the second request. So it's talking about this first request and this second request. The full content of the first request is moved to the second. So I'm going to write this. Uh, 5598 was, sorry, my primary TR. So I need to write this one, 6859. I'll close this. 6859. I want to merge 6859 into 5598. So right click on 5598, merge requests. So both of them have 5598 in here. So full content of the first request is moved to the second. So I've put in my secondary transport and I just pressed enter. So now you see that 6698 has been deleted or the secondary transport has been deleted and you can only see here the primary transport. Now if you go in, if you refresh this and you go into object list of request, you can see here the comment object list was added. Now, the reason you're seeing so many of these is because I've used the same transport to show the same merging example to somebody else before this, but our latest example was 6859, which you can see it's nine o'clock where I am. So you can, this was the latest transport that has been added. If you double click on it, it says that it's not existent in the system anymore because once a merging is completed, that secondary transport or the transport that you merged has uh, to be removed from the system, so it's just deleted. So, so this means that it was successful, and now you can see that the program is here, and this one, if you go in, you can go into any, just go inside, and you can see that the latest changes of the secondary transport have been captured. So any change that was the latest will always be in here. And if you go into object directory entry here, it says the details of the primary transport, which was my 5598, so all good. And you can also go into versions and version management, and you can see that in here, even though it is part of the 5598, you can see that it was the text here. You can see that the text was of the previous tier, so it's not present in the system anymore. And if you click on this, this is a subtask of the primary transport, so don't get confused here. It has been added as a subtask, which is just this, but, and you don't see the uh, description here as well, but if you go back, you can see the description of the previous transport in here. So it may look a little confusing, especially when there are a huge number of objects because if you're working on something, you know, it's possible that one transport contains like 60 objects, 70 objects, any number of objects. And that's when it gets very confusing about uh, if the changes are being overwritten or if the changes are being preserved correctly. So this is how you can merge those requests. Now for DDIC, you don't need to worry about uh, checking the versions because not just in DDIC, I mean for objects that are uniquely present in both the transports, you don't need to worry about them. For example, the VR1 and VR2 was not part of the secondary transport, so you don't need to check those. Only the objects that were common in both the transports needs to be checked. And then once you have merged in everything correctly, you can go ahead and log this transport or move it to QAS and you're good to go. So uh, yes, don't be scared of merging. It's pretty straightforward. And anyways, you can always create an example like this and test it out. So for today, we're just going to do this. It was very straightforward and I hope you guys find it handy. Thank you very much. See you next time.